Hello everyone, my name is Andrzej Rudzinski, I'm the archaeologist, ethnologist, and cultural anthropologist specialized in Viking Age era and well, besides the early medieval Scandinavia, my um, research of interest is around um, relationships between Slavic and Scandinavian tribes and the theory of archaeology and I'm currently working on my PhD thesis, um, supervisor of my of my thesis is uh, Professor uh, Przemysław Urbańczyk and um, initially I thought to um, take some notes and uh, read it here but um, actually I, I'm, I'm, I'm hunting on grabbing your attention so uh, so here it goes and um, today I would like to introduce you the Truso uh, settlement um, which was a uh, Viking part of trade in the early medieval As I said, and uh, what is uh, really important, it is known from the written source. Um, because, uh, written source because we only have one source, it is the Wolfson's report. Uh, Trusa is located in uh, northern Poland, it's 7 kilometers south from Gdańsk, around 10 kilometers south from Elgong. And here you can see it on the map where I put a pin. And of course, the structure of the geography changed a bit since the early medieval. So uh, back in days, um, Trusa was um, strictly connected through the river uh, to the Baltic Sea. And what is quite important, it is located on the uh, borderland, we can say, because uh, from the uh, west there were uh, we have Slavic traces, from the east we have West Baltic traces, so uh, it's a quite borderland. Well, history uh, of the search for the Jerusalem is a quite good story itself for a totally separate paper. Um, anyway, this, um, this is quite interesting and uh, romantic story, so I decided to briefly uh, summarize it. Um, why? Why was it so tempting to, uh, to find uh, Jerusalem? Of uh, course, because of the uh, of the Wolfstan's report. Um, I won't quote. You can uh, you can of course uh, read it. Uh, there are not a lot of informations of uh, of Trusa itself. It, it more it tells more about the journey of uh, of Wolfstan, uh, who took a trip from the Hedebe to uh, to Truso. But it, uh, according to, to those information, we were able to, um, to show how probably his road looked like and where more or less might be the Truso. So um, in the early 20th century, before the Second World War, there were a lot of attempts of finding a Truso. It was, uh, uh, German uh, German archaeologist. After the Second World War, there were also a few attempts of finding the Truso. Uh, you can see the points on the map. There are a lot of a lot of uh, mentioned places where Truso is supposed to be found. But actually, uh, the proper location of Truso was unknown until um, early spring of uh, 1981. Uh, it was a lazy Sunday. Uh, while uh, Marek Jagodziński, those days unknown young, and young Polish archaeologist, uh, now a good scholar and uh, probably my father, he took a, uh, he took a <laughs> ride from, uh, from Elbon, where he lived, uh, bicycle ride to the nearby villages. And accidentally he found some remains of the caravan. Of course, though that time he didn't know what he found. Actually, that was um, a piece of caravan from the Truso settlement. Uh, so after years of research, it became more clear and clear what he found. So maybe this is a, a good idea to take a bicycle rides on your on your free Sunday and, and find some some settlements. By the way, th this is the uh, bike called Hurricane. Yeah, this is um, the discoverer and the main researcher. Few photographs from the settlement. And uh, what I what I like to. Say today, what, what is most important, how are we supposed to treat the Truso settlement? Uh, I see it as an example of uh, Baltic emporias. Um, also, I put the German term Siehendusplatz because it's, um, great, uh, it shows a great way of, of explaining the meaning of the, 
of the settlement, like the sea, like the trade, uh, what kind of settlement it was. So it was um, located close to the sea. Uh, settlement was uh, separated uh, with a parcels. Of course, uh, quite important was the port function, but uh, there would not be any point of uh, having a port function without any develop uh, craft and trade. So that was the actually basis of uh, of uh, truth of uh, this kind of settlement, uh, as well as other. Uh, Baltic Emporias, and uh, what we know from the uh, archaeological research is absolutely lack of agriculture or animal husbandry inside the settlement. So it was provided just by the uh, by the peripherias, and uh, quite important was uh, long distance contacts, uh, as sort of seen as uh, part of uh, of a network uh, of nodal points. First, I would like to uh, briefly describe the settlement organization and uh, location of Russo. There were a uh, port and uh, craft and trade area. All of them were settled by Scandinavians, according to the archaeological data. Quite different, it looks at the periphery, because uh, there were a different type of buildings, a different type of um, our archaeological data. Uh, we also find uh, things like Slavic ceramic, like um, handcuffs. So we can assume there were some, or slaves, or maybe some Slavic uh, Slavic inhabitants inside this uh, Scandinavian settlement. Once again, the the location of Truso, and actually this is the only evidence of uh, of the port uh, character. Uh, despite the, the written source, we, we didn't find any actually um, remains uh, which you could look at the previous presentation, like the bowls or something. We only have a bowl track uh, due to the uh, to the conditions of the settlement. Um, that's only thing that we could register. But there would not be. Uh, this kind of trade, this kind of uh, important uh, trade in the region without uh, without craft. So we can basically say there were uh, blacksmithing, silversmithing, production of bone, antler, amber, and glass. And um, what are the bases? Why why I saying we are talking about Scandinavian settlement? Uh, according to those um, findings, I hope it will uh, become more clear picture. Um, First of all, we have um, iron crampons. Uh, here you can see it. Um, it. It proves that the settlement were uh, used all the year, also in a, in the winter. Uh, you can also uh, see the um, iron anvil uh, hammers or blacksmithing tongs. And here, uh, when we come to the silver smithing, it becomes. Uh, more and more clear about this uh, Scandinavian origins of the settlement. Uh, please take a look at this um, pendant. It shows a Valkyria holding a horse by a bridle. Actually, it's a, a, only a piece of horse, but I, I, I hope you can uh, imagine yourself the, how, how it looks if it were uh, complete. Uh, or a, a woman in a long dress. Uh, it's also very typical uh, pendant for the uh, Viking era. Um, silversmithing and quite interesting thing is here it's an uh, amulet uh, it's a ring closed in two belts separators um, what's more a, a, a lot of brooches like shield shaped brooches or uh, three arm brooches it's uh, it's typical Scandinavian uh, artifacts as well as bone and antler production like this um, composite one-sided uh, camp, um, antler handles, or, uh, which is uh, very important, this one semi-spherical uh, piece for a board game, Nefatapu. Nefatapu was a Scandinavian board game. Um, the quite same things you can find it here, also a piece for a uh, board game at Nefata, but also um, a crosses, a, um, a, a door hammer uh, made uh, with, uh, with an amber. 
But why do we know there were a number production? Because we have also uh, raw material, not only the uh, the main products, the final uh, final products, but also a lot of a lot of uh, raw material. As well, it, 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 it comes to the uh, glass production. We have uh, semi fabricants as well as um, made glass bags. Okay, so there were uh, a lot of items of trade. I, I see now maybe item is uh, not the right word to, to describe the sleds, but uh, back in the days it was one of the, the, I mean, people were treated as, uh, as items, so maybe, um, maybe it's correct. Anyway, uh, I won't read all those things, but I would like to come to the basis of uh, economy. Um, of course, it was based on the uh, Arabic silver coins. Uh, these are uh, Dirhams from the uh, from the Baghdad. You can see also folding balances and two types of weights. These are uh, semi these are spherical uh, weights and cuboctahedral weights. Two types of them, and uh, it uh, might show how the uh, how the structure of uh, of the Balkan Emporias uh, looked like back in days. Um, that's the network and the, um, and the model made by Soren Sindbeck. Uh, you can also see the Truso as uh, one of the settlement included here. And uh, for me, what is really important is to answer the question, what is the, actually the meaning of the settlement? Like, uh, okay, we have archaeological data, this is uh, really nice, but what it tells us uh, about the people. So, um, we have a few theories that we might um, try to use it. First of all, uh, it is uh, Immanuel Wallerstein uh, World System Analysis Theory. Um, there is no place and uh, no time to, to describe the theory itself, but um, it uh, mm, shows the connection between the core and periphery. Uh, well, uh, core. Uh, as, a, as a settlement, as uh, an example might be Truso, um, were uh, more richer, more wealthy than periphery. Yes, so, so, so the core, uh, rich core, used the poor uh, periphery. So this is one point of, point of view. We can also uh, see it as in some kind of um, even globalization phenomena. I, I, I won't equal, of course, uh, the globalization modern term with um, early medical reality. Anyway, um, as Iron Apadura says, um, what globalization is, it's a uh, flow of people, technologies, images, and money in the face of a globe. Um, so, uh, when we see things like the migration of Slavs, Scandinavians, and even Crucians uh, all around the Baltic Sea as a flow of the people, etc., etc., you can read it here. We have, for example, uh, money from the uh, from the Baghdad. We have um, Scandinavians in uh, North America. Uh, so there were quite huge uh, migration, and uh, maybe we can call it uh, so-called globalization, uh, early medieval Viking globalization phenomena. That's the still the the, the matter of uh, of further for further studies. Anyway, what uh, has already been done? Um, there are mm, more or less 150 papers about tools of 12 books. Uh, there were uh, 20 bachelor's, master's, and doctoral theses about uh, Truso settlement, and we have already um, 20 excavation seasons. But more interesting is what what will come next? Well. Uh, uh, according to my PhD thesis, uh, there are uh, I'm having I'm doing some research about Slavic and Scandinavian relations. Of course, uh, it will include uh, Truso settlement. Uh, until now, we don't have uh, we didn't found a great deal. Um, actually, it's uh, it's probably uh, located. But still, there were no excavations, so I hope we we can um, have some uh, some uh, money and uh, and uh, make excavations of the grave field of Truso inhabitants. And uh, main goal uh, is to uh, 
after uh, making all research complete to create an open air uh, museum like um, for example this one in Fort Wicken. So that's it and I'm <laughs>